let's talk a little bit about vibrations and the waves they create. There are two types of waves. They can have a mechanical wave or an electromagnetic wave. Mechanical waves have to have a medium to travel through. The medium can be air, can be water, it can be a string or a spring. And these mechanical waves transmit energy through the particles of the medium. So the particles of the air bump into each other, which bumps the next one, which bumps the next one. The particles move a small amount, but they don't go the whole length of the wave. So when I speak and the, the sound wave is coming out, the air particle closest to my mouth does not travel to your ear. It bumps the ones near it, which bumps the ones near it, and passes that along. Think about the, uh, like if you have a tall field of grass and wind blows, they move, but they come back to their same position. There are two different types of mechanical waves. There's a transverse wave, where the medium vibrates perpendicular to the direction of the wave. So if the wave is traveling left to right along the medium, then the particles move up and down. There we go. And this is an example of transverse waves. This low point is called the trough. The high point is called the crest. The amplitude is how much it moves off of its rest point. And the wavelength is the length of one whole wave. So from one trough to another, or from one crest to another, it'll be the same value. The other type of mechanical wave is a longitudinal wave. In a longitudinal wave, the particles vibrate in the same direction of the wave motion. So like sound is a good example of a longitudinal wave. The wave is traveling left to right. The particles are also vibrating left to right. Here's an example of, with a tuning fork making a sound wave down a tube. There's two parts of a sound wave. You've got the compressions, which is where the particles are really s close together, and the rarefactions, where the particles are really far apart. You also still have wavelength, which is the length of one whole wave, so one compression to another, or one rarefaction to another. You can have amplitude. It's a change in the density but we typically don't measure it in longitudinal waves. Let's watch this video to see examples of both types of wave. In the transverse wave, the particles of the medium, in this case the slinky, move in a direction perpendicular to the motion of the wave. So if I make a wave, the wave itself is moving left to right, but the particles in the medium are moving up and down. In a longitudinal wave, the particles of the medium move in the same direction as the wave. So I can send a pulse down the slinky. That's a longitudinal wave. There's also surface waves. And these are waves on the surface of water. They have properties of both transverse and longitudinal wave. They move in a circular motion. This website shows some really good examples of what these waves look like. Here's a longitudinal wave where the particles and the wave are moving left to right. And you can watch, they highlighted a few red ones so you can see that they're moving a small amount left to right but not traveling the whole length. We also have transverse waves. The particles move up and down and the wave moves left to right. And you can have surface waves. If you watch these yellow particles, you can see it's going to move in a circular motion. So it has some up and down motion and some side to side motion, which is one of the reasons it has properties of both transverse and longitudinal waves.